Oh yeah, sexy biscuits. Nice. Long black clothes, 64 comparison video as I like to call it Playground Wars. In this video we're taking a look at this game, Blasteroids on said machines. Originally an arcade machine released in 1987 by Atari and a sequel or follow up to the original 70s based phenomenally successful and groundbreaking arcade machine Asteroids where you're a tiny little ship. It featured vector graphics, you had rotate left, rotate right, fire and thrust and basically you would shoot well asteroids and they would shrink uh, shrink down into smaller and smaller and smaller uh, pieces every time you left the screen you would come back on think well, the running sequences and scooby-doo you would come back on the opposite end of the screen have warm fuzzy memories of playing it as a kid um, in a pub called the Butcher's Arms that was just outside of uh, Blue Anchor Bay where my parents had a caravan and down the road from Minehead it was a child friendly pub liberals would shit their pants over that now oh my god you're conditioning kids to be alcoholics fuck off liberals that's why no one likes, for you. likes you that's why no one votes for you um, but yeah they had a, a kids room that had Pac-Man cocktail cab asteroids cocktail cab and outside they had a whole bunch of fiberglass like mini playhouses and stuff like that like you know like the lady who lived in the shoe and there was a mini swiss chalet and i'm sorry i'm waffling but i just remember being an absolutely brilliant place when i was a kid when i used to drink my coke and uh pumped 10 peas into asteroids and sucked so in 1987 atari released a sequel to it called blasteroids because they tweaked the gameplay it's raster graphics now not um vector graphics and um kind of lose a little bit of the charm there but you know it's 987 uh, it's one or two simultaneous two players, so they updated it there, and uh, you get upgrades and stuff like that. You know, so that's and there's bosses, and that's why it's called quotation fingers, blasteroids. It was ported to the home systems in 1988. Raising my voice, therefore that means question mark by ImageWorks, and by that I mean the Amiga, the Atari ST, Amstrad, Spectrum, Commodore 64. Got pretty decent reviews across the board of all systems back in the day, but I thought I'd give this a go now. Mainly because I got my soft modded Wii, well I've re soft modded my Wii, uh, and then reinstalled FBZX Wii on it, so I do a comparison video. And, and, I was playing this the other day on, um, my C64 Mini and I think you might well I'm not going to tell you yet but I think you might know which one of these is going to win out of the box anyway let's get into it rather clunky title screen there press space select control for player one we will go with keyboard hello this is the 128k version there was a 48k version but it was a multi-loader press space right thrust um, Q transform um, a oh because your ship can transform and by that from what I can tell is it just makes it massive uh, Turn left turn right fire keys. Okay. Yes 1 to 8k right Don't know how accurate that is to the arcade. It's on my coin ups 8 uh, Emulator on my modded we we modded um, OG Xbox and it's never played it because you have to um, use shoulder buttons to rotate and thrust it on the... I just want thrust and also rotate to be like on the D-pad. Never mind. Anyway, right. Boom. Fire. Space. Sorry. Space. Right. So you got four difficulty levels. Top left easy, top right medium, bottom left hard, bottom right experts. We'll be going with easy. Sorry. Missed my opportunity. Press fire. Attribute Clash Tastic in 1987, there's no excuse for that. And we've leaped. Right. Were the backgrounds. Oh! Digitized. I can't remember because th that looks weird, but it looks like it's trying to do something that the arcade obviously did a lot better. 
Look, my bullets come off the screen and back on the screen. Get you. So, yeah. You've got inertia. It's not terrible graphics. It's not the greatest graphics. It doesn't really need to be. So, obviously, plays. Upgrades. Oh, I press Z. I've turned into a different ship. I'm faster. We can rebuild him. Yeah, it doesn't really need to be the best graphics of what it's doing. Was there a proper true port that looked like vector graphics of asteroids on the ZX Spectrum? I don't think so. I don't know. I'll have you. I'm not leaving until... It's sucking me in. I'm not leaving until I got my shit. Yeah, it's, it's got a weird gravity thing, I think, that pulls me in. Yeah, not the best graphics, not the worst graphics. doesn't need to be for what it's conveying. Although it was shiny and fantastic in the arcades. Now, they, it's non-linear, is it? That I can select a route. One of three routes. Everything else around me is, um, well, the game grid. Uh, you know, ultimately I have to kill or destroy each and every one of those things. Word of light. Music. Can't transform, have to get one of those. Transform, now I'm a hefty motherfucker. That works quite well. It, it, you know, it, it, it certainly resembles the original in the fact that off the screen, bottom of the screen, it's a little bit jarring until you get used to it, but... And obviously... Oh, I twatted him on my ass. Um, oh, enemy! That's new. Well, there was an alien ship, wasn't there, on the, the first one? But you get used to it, you know, like the whole the whole thrust thing. Look, attribute clash. No need for that. I fell in 1987. But it's part of its charm and part of its gameplay mechanic, I would say. Right, you have seven seconds sectors to clear. Seven seconds? Seven sectors to clear. Oh, didn't want to pick that one. Although, to be honest. Move! Oh, go back to small. Shit! That's an enemy. Why am I not moving, Dave? Open question to yourself. Health, top left, just worked out health. Uh, the red to the top right would be player two, if you've had it. I don't know if it's designed to be played more so round player two, in the sense that some enemies can't be cleared by you or are dependent on the other player. I'm getting my ass kicked, it's uneasy. Go you. Again, to be fair though, I'm not really using my... Hey! Coming in from behind. Fly past. Top Gun style. Oh, shit balls. Oh, start me the other way. Um, yeah, some stages are made to be cleared using two players. It happens. Oh. Oh, look. He's still in there. And he is. I don't want to leap. I don't want to leap. I want to... I want to... I want to... I want to dance. Right. So bottom left, bottom right. Oh look, uh, every time we clear something, it's like one of those slide puzzles we're drawing in a picture in behind. It's like when you buy peanuts from a bar back in the day when you'd have a bird in a bikini and the more peanuts you bought, the more the bird you get to see. Again, liberals probably ruined that for us as well. Yeah, I'm just sitting there till I absolutely have to move. No, move. In from the top. No, slowly. Try to try and transform, can't transform yet. It's an interesting mechanic. I feel that we didn't really need a sequel. I, I guess it was probably based on nostalgia and stuff like that. We didn't really need a sequel to Asteroids because it was so iconic, uh, you know, and such a part, staple of arcades that... That was fucking shocking. Um, anything it does, even though this does try and mix it up while still holding true to the original, um, it was never going to relive those dizzying highs. Home ports, as I mentioned, we had these, but there were no um, Shizen balls. Console ports, but then it's 1987. What would there be? A Famicom? And a. Uh, well, Famicom and or NES or a PC Engine version. There were games that kind of like homage to it on the Amiga. I can't think of the game's name, but there was a game very similar to this. 
Trying to transform, can't transform. Do you know what? The controls are really tight. It says you either... He says he gets too active. You either get the inertia thing or you don't. I know some people can't stand... Come in! Hey, he came back the other side. Can't stand this kind of thrust and inertia control, which means there's a whole bunch of games, particularly on ZX Spectrum back in the day, that you wouldn't like. I'm assuming top right, therefore, would be easier. I would like turbos. Die! I got, I got dual guns. I got one gun for the ETR. Shit and death. I played this yonks ago, like a couple of years ago, and I remember being slightly better than this. I do like that little, actually that, yeah, there we go, that little jet effect. Some of this in your life. I love that. I got that. Game on. Points for the quiet. I do like that, thrust away, suck in. It's a leap gate, if you will. A wormhole. The science is real, my friends. I kept my weapons. No, I was doing all right then. No, don't. Hey, oh, I lost my big guns. Oh, look, I'm on the screen twice. Again, think Scooby Doo. You know, they run from left to right and right to left. And they go from one side of the screen to the other side of the screen. You know Scooby-Doo, the original Scooby-Doo. Like 60 Scooby-Doo, not every shite. Throw it to Scooby-Doo afterwards. Where are ya? Yoink. Hello. Oh boy. See what I did there. Right. So I would like in-game music. It's so a 128k version. It's a multi-loader on the 48k. But what do we get from 128k? We get some c quite nice, you know, one um, AY sound effects, not beeper sound effects. Aye. Quite tinny and crunchy. Do like that. Um, but you, other than that, you wouldn't know anything about it being a 128k version that you had to load in. I want that. We're gonna fly around and do stuff. Yeah, because I would like music in the uh, in the actual port. I want that. <clears throat> I want that. Damn it! Shit! It's a little bit trickier than I remember. Ew. No. No. I keep forgetting to transform. Yeah, got you, you bastard. I don't know what, you know, other than like the fast ship and stuff like that. Ah, you bastard. No! Apparently you can, like, well, we know this, you can take the last asteroid out by twatting it. Yeah, I don't know how much it helps you. I mean, one more go. I've seen big ship that just makes you more of a target and your fire power doesn't seem much. Uh, I've seen small ship which just makes you faster, but as you can see, I'm not really using um, the thrust and inertia controls to my benefit, mainly because I'm crap at this. It's crap at asteroids and they kind of, well, make me a sitting duck. That's why I like, well, he says that, well, my now, just sat it, duck-esque if you will. Love you. And you. And you. And <laughs> yeah, I missed them all. Come on. Is that just points then? No. Ooh. Look, you can still ever so slightly move away. They're ever so slowly getting away. Points for the quotes. Right. Choice. Oh, 
Like I said, if you look at the background graphics, they're very, very simplified, but in the arcade it was, you know, planets and stuff like that and stuff going on. I remember the first boss, which I've done a previous gameplay of this years ago, and um, I was actually quite good at that. Time makes me rusty. It's just like a big green splodgy thing with big green splodgy things that came off him. That got away from me. No, I love you. Don't know what the reviews are for this. I, I was gonna, I'm trying to like get him. Turns out it was me. Um, there, I think he got pretty decent reviews on the Zelda Spectrum. Don't know about any other versions. I'd imagine the Amiga and Atari ST must be pretty damn close to being arcade perfect. Maybe I'll suck it up and do an arcade gameplay. Maybe I won't. Maybe I should get a white stick. There we go. Look at all the space I'm clearing. I press. Oh, I was pressing the wrong button to transform. That's on me. Move. Move. Of course, when you move that, you know, you go up one side of the screen to the other side of the screen. It's part of its gameplay charm, particularly on the original. You do set yourself up for just being massively twatted. Right, transform. Now I'm a big boy. All the ladies love me. I would have liked to reverse thrust. Didn't think about that, did you, Atari? Die! Oh, you get to me. I am aware I'm playing this like shite. Do you know what? It's not a bad game. It's a fun game. It helps if you like asteroids. Oh, two ships. Did he just dissolve the other ship? Car theft in space. Oh no. Oh, that's a power up. <laughs> My bad. Let's transform then. Yay, and stuff. Right, well, let's have a look at the Commodore 64 version. Here we go with Blastoids on the Commodore 64, and while it's SID chip, so therefore it's automatically better than the AY chip on the Plus 2, well, Plus General, 1 to 8K, I should say. Um, I guess it would have been an accurate version of the arcade because this has roughly the same music and it's also pants Although this is doing a slightly better job and has a slightly better tile screen because obviously it's got color Just so I let you soak that in fire Obviously, I don't have the ability to transform in this because I'm playing this on my um, no bollocks um, C64 Mini, so I don't have, well, I don't want to use virtual keyboard because it takes you out of the game. Got double lasers, pretty much plays exactly the same as the Spectrum. The sprites are slightly smaller, they're not as detailed as you would expect. Got in game music, we do like that. Um, but we got color, which means it's pants as the background are, well, not so pants in this one. We got background graphics, essentially. They could have done a better job than that. I mean, they didn't skip, uh, you know, or didn't circumvent attribute clash, I should say, on the spectrum. So, um, why couldn't they just give us better background graphics? I don't know. There we go. Right. Yeah, immediately this is far more recognizable. Well, you know, playing the um, spectrum version, what it was, because the gameplay mechanics, you know, it was, you know, I want you. Where'd he go? And there's another one. Uh, you know it was with Blastroids. But um, this is obviously far more immediately reminiscent of the arcade. I gotta start using thrust. That's a that's a thing I want. I'm on difficult not more difficult I should say, so that's why there are alien ships around. Um, where I was on pussy on the spectrum. Get in! What? Really? There's gravity to the planet. I did not know that. Yeah, something's sucking me back. That's an interesting gameplay mechanic. Obviously, that never existed in the original. Um, I'm not sticking around this time. Let's get out of dodge. Yeah. All thrust and inertia controls, basically. It's all shits and googles. I mean, if you played this in the arcade, more so over the home ports, I'd love to know what you think. At least with the attribute clash on ZX Spectrum and stuff flew in front of a planet. And um, obviously, 
the planets were, that's a very strong descriptive term for what they are, um, you could see some of the asteroids. Just notice then that with the background colours and stuff like that, okay, the music in the game is far better than the title. Um, yeah, they, they blend in. They're stealth asteroids, you know, the worst kind of asteroids. Oh boy, see what I did there. I mean, let's get the elephant in the room out of the way right now. This is better than the Zack Spectrum version. I can admit that. That's not to say the Zack Spectrum version is a bad game. It's not. It's a brilliant game. I mean, it's very difficult to screw this up. But I do prefer the sprites on the Spectrum. They may be monochromic and stuff like that. All right, I've got to fuck off and fly around now. Um, but they're bigger and slightly more detailed. Um, obviously, this is running in its color mode, so it's low-definition graphics. But... It's colour, Marge. Right, can I not blow those up? Oh, I want you. I don't know what they are. They're just obstacles and stuff like that. It's not a massive amount of improvement over it because the gameplay in both versions was completely and utterly nailed by Imageworks. But... Hey, I double leap. Oh, boss. I think. I don't know. No, not yet. Oh, cheeky. There is something to be said for my tactic, which is just sit here and only move when you absolutely have to. But it does make me a sitting duck for the um, enemy spaceships. I couldn't see myself then. Even though I'm green and Earth is blue, I blended in. Oh, it's not Earth, though, is it? I want you. You're a power-up, I'm guessing. And obviously, I'm not helping myself by not being able to upgrade, but let's be honest, it never made a massive difference in the first place, did it? Hello. However, Spectrum does beat this in one point, which is a fault of many Commodore 64 games, which is, I want sound. I want sound. New. No. So can I shoot you? Well, I can shoot you. Whether or not you blow up, it's something else to, to be said. No! Yes! I sound like a physics teacher. I bet all physics teachers fucking wet their pants at the physics and asteroids when it came out in the 70s. Or possibly didn't. And physics is too strong a descriptive term. Well, bollocks didn't want to go there. Am I backtracking? Yeah. Ah, see? You can backtrack. That's interesting. You can backtrack, but it's clear, so you don't want to backtrack. But, yeah, going to round up. Do you know what? Both are equally as playable as each other. Um, Commodore 64 version is more accurate to the arcade in the sense that it's got colour and it looks the part. Spectrum has bigger and more detailed graphics. We would expect that. I'm losing the game. Oh, double guns. I'm losing the um, a bit of, it, one of the core gameplay mechanics of you know being able to uh, change my ship on this version because I'm playing it on you know C64 Mini, but yeah I can call the Commodore 64. And um, surprises, I prefer the Spectrum version. This is better. I just I'm a fan of the Spectrum graphics when they're more detailed and they're bigger. But I'm not denying this is probably the better version. Uh, before everyone calls me fucking fa pa playing favouritism, which to be fair, I do quite a lot because it's my channel, my series of videos, and I like Zelda Spectrum. But this is the better version. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I'd love to know what you think, especially if you play this on the Amiga Atari ST. And thank you very much for watching.